A few months ago I posted a video called Driftwood Surprise and this piece is cut off of that piece of driftwood that I did. What I'm going to do with this I think is cut off a piece of it and save it for a vase and use the other part for a bowl. Now this was brought to me by Dennis and his wife and this turned out to be myrtle wood. So I'm going to take this over here to the bandsaw, cut up a piece. I'm going to cut off those projections right there that you're looking at and make a bowl blank and get it mounted up on the lathe and we'll get to turning. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop. Howdy. Well, I guess I've said it all, so let me go do that. I'll step over to the bandsaw and I'll meet you back here at the lathe. I have the piece mounted up on a woodworm screw here in my chuck. It does have some cracks in it, so I put some CA glue in those cracks. I'm hoping that that'll take care of it. It's a very dense, very tight grained wood, so I'm not too worried about it coming apart. However, this one crack runs all the way along here and all the way along the top side here too, or, or this side all the way along there. And right through the pith, looks like the pith has a hole in it. So I don't know, it might go flying, but I, I kind of think not. I'm going to be using a 5 8 inch bowl gouge. We're going to be turning at 700 RPM mask and face shield on. This has a couple of long points here and here on this end and I was thinking about incorporating those not touching them but we don't have matching points on this end. This end here is greatly elongated or this side I guess much wider than it is this way. This over here is like that but not anywhere near as wide so it might not look so good. I think what I'm going to do is come down here on the bottom and establish what the bottom will be and that will help me establish what the sides will be. And I'd like to maintain some of the bark but it's not likely. Maybe a little bit of it on the top side. When you're dealing with driftwood, you're dealing with sand, and it's just, uh, even though you can't, well, there, I see a few little grains right here in some of the little cubby holes on the piece, but I think what it does is it gets into the pores of the wood, and it dulls your chisel. This was very, very sharp to start with, so I'll probably be doing some sharpening here pretty soon. Looks like I can go a little further. That might be far enough. I like to leave little features like this if I can, you know. And the base won't be out here this far. It'll be in there a little bit further. If we're missing a little piece of the base, that's okay. It'll still sit flat. Well, at least I have a starting point. Let's uh, mark out for the tenon. I can just lay my pencil along my live center here. You probably can't see it. My hand's in the way. And that'll give me a good guide. It won't be exact, but it'll be close. And we don't need a base that wide either, so I'll, I'll take more off the side here when we get back to it. I'm going to switch to a little smaller gouge so I can 
get in there a little bit tighter. Try this 3 8 Well, you know, I don't even, <clears throat> I don't even need this tailstock. The uh, woodworm screw has a really good hold on this piece. We might not be able to pull this one off. You can see I added more CA to this crack, and that crack runs all the way from the pith on this side, all the way through, all the way up the side here, to the pith on this side. And then there's cracks radiating out from that up further. Not on this side there isn't, but on this side there sure is. So this might not work out, it might split in half, I don't know. I'm going to use a diamond point tool to square up the sides of my tenon. And that's good. Now I'm going to come back over here and start working on the side profile. We can make that base a little bit smaller, thinner. Well, you know what? I'm going to call it quits today. I know I haven't done much. Got a late start. So, I'll see you here tomorrow. i got to study on this in the morning. Well, I've been thinking about this piece all night long, trying to figure out what it wants to be. And I, I don't know what it wants to be, but I know what it's going to be, I think. We'll call it a mid-winged bowl. A mid-bowled wing. mid bowl wing. Mid-winged bowl. This is going to be a wing. So I'm going to bring the bowl, outside of the bowl, in further until this flat is gone. And this flat over here is gone. So it'll all be round like this. And then when I work on the top side, I'll bring it down to where we have, I don't know, half an inch or quarter inch or something wing here. And that wing will be all the way around. I don't know if we'll ever get the upper half round like this will be. Maybe. Maybe we will. I don't like doing that because it, it kind of wastes wood. It makes the bowl smaller than it needs to be, but uh, it, it's not looking like anything at this point. 5 8 inch bowl gouge, about 720 RPM, mask and face shield on. You know, I'm inclined to uh, turn it around now before I even sand it. See if it's going to stay together for one thing. Work on this wing. I won't hollow it out because I need the, the woodworm screw to turn it back around and sand it up and whatnot. But I think I'm going to turn it around now, grab the tenon, and work on the upper part of this wing and just see if it's going to turn into anything. Well, now that I can see the natural parts of this with these points on here and a little bit of bark here and not anywhere else, this is so unlike me, I, I don't even know how to think. But I'm just going to go ahead and take these points off. I'm just going to make a round wing on here, half inch wide or three eighths wide or something. Completely round, just to match the bottom. And then the, and then once I get in here, then the bowl will project above that wing 
to match the size of the outside of the bottom of the bowl here. I don't, I don't know what else to do. I don't think we can even call it a wing. By the time I get done here, it's going to be a little bump on the bowl. I'm going to go sharpen up. Okay, yeah, it's just going to end up being a bead is all. No nature in this piece except for some grain, huh? Boy, this is just so unlike me. Well, I could I could leave what little nature we have here and hollow it out inside of that. That probably wouldn't look that good. I'm still thinking. Okay, I'll be back. Well, I think I've come up with an idea on, on what's going to rescue this piece. Uh, turn it from something extremely ordinary into something recognizable and kind of cute. So I've turned the piece back around. It's mounted up again on the woodworm screw. I'm just going to make some cleaning cuts. Just try and smooth this out a little bit and sand it. So let me get my mask and face shield back on and we'll get back to just cleaning it up a bit. I think I'm going to fill this crack. I hardly ever do, but it's kind of big, so I think I'm going to fill that crack. I'll figure out with what here in a second. I decided to go with coffee grounds. I've got some in this little can here. I'm just going to try and sprinkle them into the crack. Now this is actually a pretty deep crack, so it's gonna take a while to get it full I'm just tapping it to get it down inside the crack and I like coffee grounds because they're finer than wood chips now someone suggested a couple of people actually that I buy a little coffee grinder and I have one around here somewhere for grinding coffee beans and use that to grind up wood chips and that's an excellent idea and I have a coffee grinder I don't know where it is and then I'm just gonna put some CA in there and I'll let that set up for a bit Then I'll try and get some more coffee grounds in there, a little more CA, and I'll be back. Now I'm just going to sand the piece in reverse at about 350. I'm going to start at 120 grit. And I'll work up through about 400 grit. And then we're going to try a totally different finish on this, I think. See you in a bit. Well, I said this was going to be different. I've never used this before in my life. 
I bought it for some other project once and and didn't use it. It's an acrylic paint and it's uh, it says it's lamp black which is exactly what I would like to have. What I'm hoping is after I get this coated I hope to wipe off some of it so you can see the grain through there because you're not seeing any grain now are you? That's not what I expected. I expected it to be thinner than that. It doesn't hurt my feelings. This is just kind of an experiment. This certainly is not what I normally do. Maybe I can wipe it off. Nope. It's on there. It's late in the day again. We'll pick this up tomorrow. We'll turn it around and finish off the top side, hollow it out, and see what we have. See you tomorrow. Well, you missed it. Sorry. I came out this morning without the camera, and I wanted to try and remove some of that black. I didn't want it quite so black as it was. So I found this really coarse. So I used that, and it removed, as you can see, much of the black, maybe too much. So I'm going to call that done for now. We'll, we'll see what it looks like later. I might add more black back in there. You know, I'm not a color guy. I don't, I don't, this is so unlike me. Sorry. Sorry for my regular viewers. This is not what you expect when you tune into my channel, but it's what we have for right now. I might change it. Don't know. So now I'm going to take the piece, turn it around, put the tenon in the chuck. If I can get it off of there, get it off of that woodworm screw. Oh boy, not much to hold on to here. There we go. So now I'm, I'm going to hollow this out. I'm going to use a Forstner bit, probably two or three Forstner bits, to drill a hole in here. And then I will see what it looks like, but probably clean all this up and make it flat and smooth rather than natural like it is now. And proceed from there. I'm going to start with a two inch Forstner bit, a lathe that's going to be spinning at about 200 RPM. I'll work my way up to about a three inch. Got it all drilled out uh, to three inches. cracks just a squealing away. Yeah, that looks okay. Okay, uh, time for sanding. I'm just gonna sand with my two inch discs. I'm gonna start at 120 and work my way up through 400. I'm just gonna sand it like that. I'm going to end up putting that same black stuff on here because that's all the black stuff I got. And I'll probably put more on the outside and then try and take off less than I did. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it looks okay. I know you probably can't see it that well from where you are. I thought it should be blacker than that, but not totally black like it was. And it's going to be hard to remove it from the inside. We'll work it out. So anyway, I'll be sanding up through 400. I'll bring you back here in a bit. We'll put some more black stuff on there. I'm going to try doing a little less of this. I put it on pretty heavy before. I don't know if this thing understands less or what. I'm thinking it does not. Now, this is not what I set out to do, so I'm just not prepared at all. Uh, it still goes on quite heavy. 
if I would have known I was going to be doing this, I would have been, I would have used some sort of, I would have got some black stain or something like that, not paint. I set out to make a live edge bowl, <laughs> and this is not that. Now that crack that I filled runs right all the way around the bottom, through the tenon, and up the other side, from the pith to the pith. So right now, the uh, chuck jaws are holding that crack together, and I'm hoping that it will stay together when I take them, take this out of the chuck jaws. But I still have a cool idea that might, like I said, might save this. I am going to go over the outside again. Because it's just a little bit too light for me. Okay, well there it's covered. I'll wait for it to dry a bit. And then I'll give it the steel wool treatment again and a little bit of sanding again. And see if I can't do better the second time. Okay, see you in a little while. I just drilled a matching hole on the other side here. I use the indexing system on my lathe to set up this hole and one 180 degrees over here on the other side. So you can get the idea of what it is I'm trying to do here. I just don't know how this is going to go. This is that real coarse steel wool. I put some tape around there to make it a little tighter ball and then I'm going to hold it with these vice grips because I'm afraid this some of this stuff is so long if I hold it with my fingers and that gets wrapped around my finger and then it gets caught in one of these cracks. Well, there goes my finger. So um, I think this will be fairly safe, but I am going to wear a mask because I don't want to be breathing this stuff. I'm going to spin the lathe up. Oh, let's see. About 600 RPM. I Just a guess. I don't know what's right. Let me get my mask on. We'll get going. And I'm doing this because sandpaper would just clog right up with paint. But if I can get most of it off, then I'll switch to the sandpaper. Yeah, that's good. Now I have this brass rod and that's going to serve as a bail for this piece. I've marked the center of it here. I'm just going to put it right on this raised up area with a clamp. I didn't really spend a lot of time calculating how long this should be and it looks a little long. Of course I can trim it off. I can just snip these off to the right length and then I'll bend them so they fit in these holes that I drilled. Okay let's get this tenon off of here. I've mounted a block of wood up in my chuck. I'm going to place the whatever you call this over that. I still have my center hole there for reference so I can just drive my live center into that. I forgot that I put CA through here, so maybe that crack's not going anywhere. That's what I'm hoping for. We'll bring up the tool rest. We'll spin the piece up, see if it's running true, and it is. I'm going to take a 3 8 inch bowl gouge to remove that tenon. Turn the speed up to about 600 RPM and commence the removing it. check for clearance and I get asked once in a while what I mean by check for clearance. I'm looking between my gouge, my straight edge and what's remaining of the tenon to make sure there's a gap which means this is higher 
than the base so it'll set on this base and it won't set on the the center portion. So I like to leave some of that raised up just for visual interest. So we have clearance. And that's pretty small so I'm going to switch to a 3 8 inch swept back bowl gouge so that I can get in there a little bit tighter and I'm going to get my tool rest a little closer and a little bit higher. I'm going to turn the speed down to about 400 RPM and just keep working it away. Well, it's kind of disintegrating on me, isn't it? I'm going to turn the speed down to about 200 RPM and I'm going to apply the bevel of the gouge against the bottom of the piece. Pressure towards the headstock. Right hand on the gouge, left hand on the switch. And when the little nub stops turning or disintegrates, we'll know we're through. Like that. Now I'll just take this over here to the workbench, sand it up, sign it, get it finished, and I'll be right back. Be sure you stick around at the end of the video so you can see the before and after shots of this piece. If you'd share the video, that'd be terrific. I'd really appreciate it. Well, here it is, one bean pot plant holder in the books. I guess it has grown on me. I guess I kind of like it. It'd be great to uh, just put a potted plant in there, huh? That's what I think. There's the bottom. It looks rustic. I don't know that I achieved antique but rustic for sure. What do you think? Tell me what you think. It has it has grown on me. You can put the bale down if you want to. Leave it up if you want to. Thank you to my friend Dennis for sending this along for all to enjoy. If you like this video, thumbs up please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, holy cow, you are totally cool. Thank you so much for that. If you're not a subscriber and would like to be totally cool, just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome and I love reading them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.